everybody for your support in the comments and to those of you who showed up to my first premiere. So if you would like to stay in the loop of how videos are coming along and when you can expect them to premiere and for dumb tweets like this that I'm more proud of than I probably should be, then please be sure to follow me at Yarl Jarhead. Thank you and enjoy the video. So with the dynamic duos of Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank on the scene, it looked as if Naughty Dog and Insomniac were once again ready to go to battle for mascot supremacy. But they both just got sucker punched because here comes a fucking circus raccoon to literally steal the spotlight. And his name is... Ah! Right, so you're probably wondering what he's yelling about. So this is Sly Cooper. Wait, no, 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 not him, no. This is Bentley, and this is Murray. And these guys met at an orphanage after Sly's family was murdered by a gang of crooks. Yes, I mean, this just got dark very fast. Known as... The Fiendish Five. That's not intimidating at all. The Coon Clan had their family heirloom, the thing is Rackamagookus ripped away from them, with its pages shredded and scattered across the globe, or flat earth, whatever you prefer. Sly comes from a long line of master thieves, each ancestor specializing in different thieving abilities, and said abilities were logged into the book to be passed down to future generations. The difference between a master thief and your everyday <laughs> raccoon is that master thieves only steal from other thieves, as Sly claims there's no fun in stealing from ordinary people, but I guess Sly never played Skyrim. That brings us to Present day Paris, where Sly and the gang, but mainly Sly, it's really all Sly, break into police headquarters to retrieve more information on the Fiendish Five so they can find the members and steal back the thing as Rackamagookus. After snagging the case file from Interpol Inspector Carmelita Fox's office, Sly is intercepted by her, and they're just so dandy every time they're on screen together. A little dinner, a little dancing. I think I can help you out. Hmm, sounds romantic. As long as you don't mind dining in jail. Nah, I hear the service is lousy. However, it was at this very moment that I realized Sly's mouth moves in an incredibly unsettling fashion. Like the little thieving rascal he is, Sly's very cunning, quick-witted, and suave. And a bit of a dick. Murray part-time driver and full-time burden. While Carmelita's obviously on the other side of the law, obsessed with putting the Cooper gang behind bars. And while they won't admit it yet, they've got a little something going on for each other, eh? eh? So you bust a move through the fire escape all the way down to the team van and make an epic getaway. <laughs> Gosh. From what we've seen between the gameplay and cutscenes, I'm sure you've already noticed the unique comic book aesthetic this game goes for. It really gives the cutscenes this Saturday morning cartoon vibe and helps Sly Cooper form its own identity against the competition. Going one step further with that is the stealth-based acrobatic gameplay. Sly has your traditional platforming controls like jumping and attacking, but he can do plenty of cool tricks like climb pipes and ropes and walk along edges and uh... Well, that's all you can really do at the beginning of the game. But there's plenty of abilities you unlock from recovering the lost pages of the thing as Rackamagookus, such as electric rolling, <laughs> and exploding heads. <laughs> okay, look, could Sly's dad not read or something? How could he die when he should have been an electric, exploding, time warping god coon? But how can you turn into the Chad coon? by retrieving clue bottles spread throughout each level like the good little furball you are. Have a biscuit. And once you collect all the clue bottles in an area, Bentley can decipher the safe's code, allowing you to snag a hip new ability or upgrade your Bonocucom, which is a device that lets you scan the area. These upgrades range from telling you the location of breakable objects in the area, clue bottles, and even giving you descriptions of enemies in the level. You also use the Bonocucom to communicate with Bentley and Murray, and who else thinks that Bentley looks like he's wearing a dress? But where you really make the most of your thieving capabilities are by lighting torches, racing monkeys, and fighting crabs with a submarine. Ah, yes. Very Master Thievey. I felt more sneaky and crashed to insanity. While admittedly the submarine and this vehicle, I guess sucker punch don't even know what to call it either, control perfectly, and I mean perfectly, they don't really fit thematically with the whole sneaky slippery boy thing they set out for. It wouldn't bother me as much if Murray did some of these missions, since one, it gives him something to do rather than be a fucking bitch, and two, he's already the driver, so this seems right up his alley. At least Bentley's one mission he got at the very end of the game was along the lines of thievery as he had to hack into a computer, which feels a lot more appropriate than whacking chicken. I wish we got more stuff like that from Bentley, but better late than never. There are things that this game does that definitely feed into this theme of stealth, such as segments where you have to hide in barrels to avoid being killed by dart traps and being seen by spotlights. There's various types of lasers that set off alarms and become lethal once you trigger them, and flashlight guards patrol areas as well, and if you get spotted by them, it's practically game over since Sly can't take much damage. But you don't really have to worry about that, they're blind as hell. To give yourself more of an edge, you need to continue to collect coins sprinkled throughout the levels or by breaking objects into feeding enemies. Once you reach 100 coins, you'll receive a magically delicious 
lucky charm. And after receiving two lucky charms, you'll simply earn another life for every 100 coins gained from that point forward. To move forward and progress throughout the game, you need to gather a key from each level. The hubs where these levels are located act similarly to those of Spyro, where there's portals to the levels located in one big central area. Gathering three keys will allow you to surpass the first area of the hub. This typically involves using them to unlock a gate to knock out a generator, or unlocking this car that is for some reason going 75 miles per hour in reverse and nobody thought to just turn it off. Once you've collected seven total keys, you can advance to the boss of that area. Beating the bosses also allows you to steal back their page of the thing as recommend- Alright, I'll stop. While the abilities you learn throughout levels up to this point are merely optional and only serve to overpower you, the capabilities you learn from the boss's pages are instrumental to the core gameplay, such as ninja spire jumps, rail walks and slides, and invisibility. The more abilities you gain make Sly much more fun and acrobatic to play around with in these jungle gym-esque environments. With the swamps of Haiti and Krakara Volcano host to some very slick and smooth maneuvering, along with some nice immersive music. It's not the most memorable soundtrack in the world, but like Jack and Daxter, music doesn't necessarily have to be memorable for it to be good. Diving into lower, more atmospheric tracks and hub areas, increasing a bit more in the majority of levels, and ramping up once you enter combat. Among other featured locations are the Welsh Triangle, Utah, and China, each home to a member of the Fiendish Five, all with their own very unique backstories. Sir Raleigh the Frog, the chief machinist of the Fiendish Five, got into crime because he was very rich and got bored. Now that is storytelling, gentlemen. You've got me hard. Also, notice how the episode cards say Sly Cooper in? Even the developers know Bentley and Murray are useless. Just like most of the bosses are. Raleigh hops around, you whack him. He hops around some more, you whack him. Tornado! You whack him. <laughs> Mugshot of Utah was a bullied kid, so he decided to get jacked and beat up all those who picked on him. He's my favorite member of the Fiendish Five since he has the best overall episode, one of the better boss fights, and he's pretty funny. You're a monkey wrench in my operation? Some scrawny rat with a stick. Hey, wait a second. I seen that stick before. Maybe when my father knocked her block off with it. Sly. Your dad is dead because of him! So Mugshot's fight is all about spinning these mirrors and reflecting them off these crystals to burn him. My beautiful gun is destroyed! <laughs> Good thing I got a spare upstairs. I died so many times in the beginning because I didn't know you could just jump over his bullets, but once I figured that out, he was boned. Get it? Because he's a dog. Ms. Ruby is the chief mystic of the Fiendish Five and was feared by others as a young pup for having the ability to summon the undead. I can't wait to see how that plays into her epic boss battle later on. In all seriousness, I actually love this fight. And I will totally admit I'm being a hypocrite because this is so wildly different from the core gameplay. It's basically a voodoo Simon says, and it gets pretty hectic towards the end with the music rapidly picking up the pace. While the PS2 version of this fight is fine, the PS3 remaster I'm playing on has the music somehow desynced with the rhythm of the buttons that you're using to dodge. <laughs> It doesn't bother me 95% of the time, but I know this issue has thrown off a lot of people. Nonetheless, this didn't ruin the fun for me. I still had a blast, just like those poor villagers that got blasted into oblivion. Next up is the Panda King, who as a youthful lad was fascinated by fireworks. Trying to impress the nobleman, he instead put on an unbearable display. <laughs> Woohoo! I am on fire today! Which sent him down a path of, well... Sly said it better than I ever could. You're just a frustrated firework artist turned homicidal pyromaniac. Fire! I cannot stress enough how elementary this fight is. It is so laughably easy that Sly has proven he not only specializes in stealing from criminals, but also in stealing my time. Sly notices in the pages he'd so far recovered of the Thievius Raccoonus that a silhouette of an owl appeared in many of the different backgrounds, which leads us to the burning rock that is the Krakara Volcano, home to the mysterious fifth member of the Fiendish Five, Clockwork. After infiltrating Clockwork's mountain base, Sly finds that Carmelita has been captured and sets out to rescue her. It turns out this was a setup used to lure Sly in, which then leads to Bentley hacking the system to free them from the gas chamber. From here, Carmelita and Sly have a little moment where Carmelita questions Sly's motives for freeing her. Sly simply remarks that Clockwork is the much bigger threat here and that he's never actually seen her as an enemy. Which makes sense since just a few minutes ago he said thieving wouldn't be nearly as fun without her chasing him around. They form a temporary troop. <laughs> 
Okay, now we escort Sly up to get his cane back, and then Sly makes a run for Carmelita's jetpack at the top of Clockworks Tower in what is easily my favorite part of the game. And it sucks that this literally lasts like one minute, kind of like me. You swing from hooks, run on rails avoiding electric gates, smash and jump on gears, climb wires. It's so much fun putting all your skills to the test in one fast-paced tension-filled gauntlet, which leads us to the final boss. And it utilizes absolutely none of your skills learned to this point. Point. You see Clockwork for the first time, and he is a completely different beast from the other opponents up till now. He is an immortal mechanical owl who has been stalking the Cooper line for hundreds, even thousands of years, keeping himself alive simply out of pure hatred for his family. This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> While Clockwork fires at you, Carmelita assists you by shooting the owl with her shock pistol, granting you an opening to attack. After going down once, he rises from the lava, and Sly questions him on why he didn't finish the job murdering Sly along with the rest of his family. Clockwork wanted to prove to the world that Sly was nothing without the Thievius Raccoonus, and that his family name would simply cease to exist without the book, failing to realize that it takes great thieves like Sly to create the book, rather than the book creating great thieves. This time around, Clockwork fires electric hoops you have to maneuver through while you wait once again for Carmelita to create an opening for you. After taking him down again, you navigate a field of debris until you make it to his head where you knock him senseless with your- what the fuck? You knock him senseless with your thundercock and reminisce on your adventures before Carmelita steps in to give Sly that 10 second head start. Three, two, one. I felt bad leaving her stranded on that giant rock but I knew it wouldn't be long before we'd see each other again. You know, I'd say this ending's pretty cute if it weren't for the fact that Sly just handcuffed her over a fucking volcano. After beating the game, you unlock the Japanese version of the opening cutscene. And once you've restored the Thievius Raccoonus to 100%, you get a bonus ending for that as well. There's also Master Thief sprints for you to accomplish to unlock developer commentaries on each level, giving you more of an idea on their thought process as they created the game, which is really cool. But I'm not doing those sprints because I can just look up the commentaries online. On top of that, once you've done on everything there is to do, you get a behind the scenes movie and a compilation of commercials made for the game along with bloopers. All this stuff they give you is super appreciated. In short, while several mini games and even boss fights didn't fit thematically with what the game's going for with its whole stealthy rat thing, most of them controlled perfectly, so I can't knock the game too much for that. Even so, I just don't think that they utilized the whole sneaky thieving side of the game to its full potential, nor did they utilize Bentley and especially Murray to their full potential. But at the end of the day, Sly managed to stand out from the pack with its distinctive aesthetic and his heartfelt quest for revenge. The game constantly keeps things interesting, introducing new abilities for you to tinker around with, and Sly's dynamic with the rest of the cast works so amazingly well. There's much to be improved upon from Sly Cooper, but in the end, Sly still managed to rightfully steal the spotlight and firmly cement his place on the PS2 mascot map.